if 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 the spirit if the Lord say so when I finish talking with you we'll do this song if not then we will we'll just have to save it but I want to talk to you for a few minutes come on open your Bibles turn to Acts 2 so the Bantham hold on because it may still come on When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. All right. Come on. Lift that Bible. Let's, let's say the shallow saying together. Let's say it together. Everybody ready? Come on. Let's say it. This is my Bible. And I am convinced that I am what it says I am and I can do what it says I can do I am a believer and not a doubter I am a doer and not just a hearer and because I am a doer in 2013 I will bring my tithes and offerings to God's house and my life is the better after hearing and doing the word of faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing and hearing by the word of God. All right, you may be seated. I want to talk to you for a few minutes. It says here and there, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues that the Spirit gave them other. I want to talk about spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living. Somebody say spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Let me talk with you for a few minutes now. This was a room full of about 150 folks. And they were there waiting, waiting on the promise of Jesus. Jesus told them, go there, go, go, go to Jerusalem. And wait on the promise. Just wait. You know. and, and I'm afraid we got a lot of folks today that don't have time to wait. Now, now, now we'll wait on Joe Blow. We'll wait on silly stuff. But when it comes to waiting on what God has already promised you. We get impatient. And we get impatient because it don't come fast enough. Jesus told them, he said, I want you to wait on the promise. Just wait. Don't get impatient. Don't throw in the towel. But just wait. And if you wait, somebody say wait. If you wait, 
the promise will come to pass. But you got, but you got to wait. Now, you got to see this. They were all in one place on one accord. Now, nothing will happen until you get on one accord with yourself. Say self. Before you can get on one accord with anybody else, you first got to get on one accord with self. Now, you, you can't be divided. You, you can't be hot today and cold tomorrow. It's not going to work. You have to be on one accord with self. One accord. Now, when you can come into agreement with self, then you can look to be in agreement with others. But it first has to, has to take place at home. Say home. You can't be beating up yourself. One minute you're happy with yourself. Next minute you upset with yourself. One minute you're patting yourself on the back. Next minute you, you, you're so depressed you don't know what to do. God has never designed for life once you accept him to be like that. You, you got to see what God has for you. Listen, listen. It's a trick of the enemy for you to get down. It's a trick of the enemy for you to walk in despair. Look at your neighbor, it's a trick of the enemy. Well, Reverend, what are you coming today for? I'm coming to help you. I want to help you to have an abundant life. Say abundant life. Yeah. Time out for just living. Just living from day to day just trying to make it. You ain't got to try to make it. You can make it. Anybody in Christ can make it. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm in Christ. These 150 folks was in the upper room waiting on the promise. And because they were on one Accord. Suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. Now, this sound was not a mighty rushing wind, but it was, it sounded like, and it was as if it was a mighty rushing wind. Look at the neighbor said, but it wasn't the wind. Some folks try to say the Holy Ghost is the wind. It was not the wind, but it sounded like a rushing mighty wind. And what did, what did it do? It filled the whole, the whole room. Look at David said the whole room. Where the 150 folks were sitting, it filled the the whole room. In other words, every, what, what did you say it down south? Every muke and corner. <laughs> what, what you call it? Every nook and corner. Look at them say every nook and corner. In other words, there was not a space where the Holy Ghost wasn't. If you were sitting there, then it was on you. It was on you. Now, you got to see this. You got to see this. Then there appeared to them, appeared to them, divided tongues as of fire. As of fire. The tongues were divided. They, was, they were divided. And they were sitting right on the person. 
all 150 people in the room had the divided tongues, what it looked like. It was all on them. See, they couldn't really tell what it was, so they had to give their best definition of what they saw. And they was trying to explain it. But how many know you can't explain the Holy Ghost? When it gets on you, you can't explain it. Your hand goes up without you knowing why it went up. Sometimes you start running, ain't nobody chasing you. They were doing the best they can, best they could, trying to explain what took place. And because they were in the room, this Holy Ghost filled each one of them. And they begin to speak with other tongues. Notice, I didn't say unknown tongues. I said they begin to speak with other tongues. In other words, if, they, if it was today, if it was today, it would be folks speaking in, a, in, the, in that room, they would be speaking English, Italian, French. You, you understand what I'm saying? The folks on the outside was hearing them speak in their own language. But notice, none of them went to school to learn how to speak those folks' language. <laughs> when the Holy Ghost comes, look at David said, when the Holy Ghost comes, it'll cause you to do things that you cannot do in the natural. This is why it's so important for us to be filled with the Holy Ghost. The power comes not because of you, but it's because of who's in you. Once you get the Holy Ghost in you, your life changes. Somebody say changes. You start doing things that you have not done before. You start loving folks. The same folks that hate you. When the Holy Ghost come, you find yourself being good to people that can't stand you. Are you listening to me? I ain't trying to make you shout, run, do I'm trying to help you this morning. You getting ready to take the communion. You can't take this the wrong way. Because if you take this unworthily, you're drinking damnation to your soul. I'm trying to help you so that when you take this, you won't get sick. Because if you take it the wrong way, you could get sick. Not only get sick, Brother Jack, but that you could die. Look at somebody and say, die. So I want you to take this worthily. And, and worthily, not talking about you dot every I and cross every T. But it means at this moment that you're getting ready to take it, you are on one accord with yourself. should come with with praise and worship on your heart come on say it with me say praise and worship it should be on your heart this is you should enter the gates with thanksgiving when you come through the old gates outside there when you come when you ride up through the, the park in the parking lot there should be some thanksgiving right in your heart thanking God that you made it that far but when you come through that door, 
You done thank them outside. You ought to come through the door with some praises on your lips. Listen, listen. When you come through that door, you shouldn't come through the door. Where am I going to sit? Who am I going to sit with? I don't think I want to sit beside her. I think I... I think I said over here ain't nobody in this seat. I sit here. You don't come here like that. You come through that door with a praise on your heart, thanking God. You got to thank him and then praise him. Somebody say praise him. Nobody should have to pump you up to praise God. He's the one that woke you up this morning. He's the one that clothed you in your right mind. He's the one that allowed you to be able to see, to breathe, to have the blood running warm in your vein. He's the one. And because he's the one, you should give him praise. And you got to see this. You can give him praise. I don't care how ridiculously you lived the night before. How ridiculously. See, you got to see this. You can praise him if you were drunk last night. Well, let me, let me bring You can praise him if you were drunk when you came through the door. Because the same God that got you through the door is the same God that brought everybody else through the door. And if you ain't got nothing else to praise him for, thank him for bringing you through the door. Now, when it comes to worship, that's another story. But praise is what all of us can do. Come on, say praise is what I can do. See, when you come to the house of God, you ain't got to set like, I can't praise him because somebody saw me last night. No, 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 no. They did see you. Somebody did see you. The mess you did, somebody did see you. But you know what? The one, the one that has control of everything, the one that can, that has the sentence to where you gonna spend eternity, he saw you and he said, in spite of what you've done last night, you can still praise me. He said that, praise me regardless of how you live because praise is what you should do. Now, when you praise him, you gotta see this, when you praise him, Something takes over. See, when you praise God, you can be the booger man. But when you praise God, guess what happens? When you praise him, he leaves glory. And he inhabits your praise. Did you hear what I He gets in your praise. And that same person that was drinking, shooting up, been doing all that, hormone and everything else, that same person, when they come through the door, they got a right, hear me, they got a right to praise God. You have a God-given right to praise him. Don't let folks stop you from doing what you have a God-given right to do. We, we let folks limit us on what we can do. Folks talk about us. They bring up your past. Some of it is true. Some of it is not true. But who cares? That's your past. You can't undo nothing you have done. Look at your neighbor and say, I can't undo nothing I have done. And anybody who tried to get you to live in your past is nothing but the devil. Are you listening to me? You can do better than your past. And God wants you to do better than your past. This is why he wants you to praise him. Look at somebody and say, praise him. Why don't you look at the person and say, he's talking to you. That's right, he's talking to you. You can praise him. Now, worship is a different story. See, you got to live something to worship him. And that's what gets you to that point. When you start praising him, he comes in, inhabits your praise, and then causes you to get into a place where you can worship him. 
Are you hearing me? You, well, bro, Reverend, I got to wait until I get. No, hear me. You praise him, and then he comes down and inhabits your praise. He gets in you, and whenever God gets in anybody, they are worthy to worship him. Are you hearing me? We get caught up with semantics and all that stuff that folks try to put on you to keep you from praising, which will cause you to never get to worshiping. But if you can start out praising him, the worship will come. Are you hearing me? Now, when it comes time to commune with him, and that's what we're really doing. I know it looked like we commune with one another, but we're really communing with him. He says, as often as you do this, you show forth my suffering. Say Jesus' suffering. As often as we take communion, we show forth Jesus' suffering. We let him know, uh, I'm with you. You died for me, I'm with you. You shed it, your blood for me, I'm with you. See, we, we, we commune with him. Say, with him. And don't let anybody put you in a category where you can't commune with him. All you have to do is get yourself on one accord. That's where it starts. One accord. Hear me today. This is not what I had planned to preach for you. I had a sermon prepared that I stayed up last night to preach to you. I've been working on it all week. And stayed on it last night until about 2 in the morning. Went to bed and, and got up this morning and was getting ready to go and look at it. And the Lord said, don't even look at it. I said, why? I'm like, why? I haven't preached that today. I said, let me at least let me glim through it. Down, couldn't even look at it. Open it up here. It is open up right there to the passage. And I didn't get a chance to go into the body. Because it's not for you today. Hear me today. What is for you is for you to you gotta come to a place where you forget about people. When you come to the house of God, forget about people. Forget about who knows you and who don't know you. Because that's not the issue when you come into God's house. You want a relationship with him. That's who you want your relationship with. You want it with him. Because he's the one that's going to, he's the one that's going to take care of you. He's the one that's going to put you in heaven or hell. Say, say Jesus. We have to accept him as our Lord and our Savior. He's the one that's going to do it for us. Not the people. So get folks off your mind when you come to the house of God. Come to the house of God to praise him. Give him thanks when you come through the driveway. When you come through the door, start praising him. Praise him. Praise him on your way to your seat. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just so happy to be here. Oh, man, thank you, Jesus. I made it. I made it. I made it. And the first song, the first time you get a chance to, to do a praise cooperate with the people in the house of God, don't, don't sell yourself short. Get in on the praise. Because that's what caused God to come down and inhabit to get in you. Say, get in me. How many want the Lord in you? Well, I'm telling you how to get him in you. You got to praise him. Praise him, he'll come in you. Praise him, he'll come in your praise. Praise him, he'll be right there beside you. Anybody want him beside you? Come on, give him a praise now. Just give him a praise. No, give him a praise. Give, give God a real praise. Come on, give him a real praise. Come on, glory. Somebody say glory. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say glory. Come on, say hallelujah. Hey! All right, all right. Now, now you, got, you, you got the principle. Everybody got the principle? No, no, really, you got the principle? All right, now, here, here's what you got to do now so that you don't sell yourself short. Have a seat, have a seat. 
got to do this now so that you don't sell yourself short and that you don't miss out on all. Oh, God, God got so much for you. He got so much in store for you in the spirit realm. Say spirit realm. Yeah, in the spirit realm, everything you need is already in the, you, you need a financial blessing. You need, you need health. You need better health. You, you need your children to act right. You, you need God to bless your home. Hear me today. It's already in the spirit realm waiting for you. It's, it's like you having money in the bank and don't know it. See, when you know you got money in the bank, you don't have a problem going there, making a withdrawal. Am I saying it right? I'm trying to get you to see in the spirit realm, you have an account that's full. You just got to tap into it. And if you tap into the spirit realm, you can have, listen, listen, you can have not just what you need, but when you delight yourself in him, that's that praise going in. And you don't care who see you. You don't care. You don't care about that person that's you know saw you last night. You don't care two cents about them because you are now in the spirit and you're in the spirit realm. You're letting the Lord do what needs to be done in your life, and He's gonna bless you. Look at somebody say He's gonna bless me. He's gonna bless you. I'm through. I'm through. I'm really. I'm through. I'm through. But I wanted you to see this because without. Without you taking the principle, you're going to miss the effect. You gotta, you gotta hold to the principle. God has a plan. No, none of us set up the plan. He set it up. See, he is, he's the architect. He designed it. He just want us to follow. Do what he said and get the blessings that we want. How many want to be blessed? All right. All right. Now, I want you to do this for me. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Listen, I only want those who believe that God can heal them. If you believe God can heal you, I want you to make your way, not to the front, but just, no, just stand, just stand. If you believe God can heal you, just stand. If you believe God can, can fix your situation, if you believe that, if you really believe that, lift your hand. Now, if you don't believe it, don't put your hand up because God's going to do something for you all because you're in agreement with him. I didn't say in agreement with me. You're in agreement where, where two or three are touching. He promised to be in the midst. And whenever God shows up, somebody is going to be blessed. Hear me now. Hear me. If you believe God can fix your situation, really believe it. Because it don't take but two or three, and you and God is two. So it don't take but two or three. Touching and agreeing. Now, if you believe it, lift both hands. Close them eyes. Look towards heaven. And tell the Lord, I believe it. I believe you can work it out for me. Come on, tell him, say, I believe. You can work it out for me. I believe you can touch my body. I believe you can heal me. I believe you can financially bless me. I believe you can do whatever I need for you to do. Now, if you believe it, put those blessed hands together and give the Lord a hand praise. You may be seated. You may be seated. I'm through. Really, I'm through. I'm through. 
I pray, I pray that you heard what God had to say this morning. Nothing profound. Nothing profound. You should already know what I said. Nothing profound. But sometimes God just want to say something to wake you up, your senses. Just wake your senses up so you can see that God is not complicated. He's not complicated. All right, all right. Church doors are open. You here don't have a church home. It's not complicated. You, you, can, you can walk down the aisle, give the preacher your hand, and I know you said, Look, but do I got to walk down that aisle? Because there's a lot of folks in here, and I don't really want all these folks to see me walking down the aisle. Listen, trick of the enemy. He did that to me when I first wanted to come and join the church. I was so embarrassed. I didn't know what to do, you know. But I got up enough strength and made myself walk down the aisle. Made myself. Made myself. If you're here, don't have a church home. You don't have a church home. We would love to have you here, Shallow Baptist Church. We'd love to have you. I promise you this. I promise you this. Because I, I haven't, I haven't really, I haven't really preached a, a, a hoopa, one of them kind of hoopa songs, sermons in a while. Say hooping, Judge Blood Jack. Hooping. I haven't done one of those in a while. I haven't preached one of them hooping sermons in a while, and and. Uh, I came out of a hooping church, and you know, they like to they like to put some gravy on the sermon, you know. And so I, next Sunday, if you allow me, I will put some gravy on the sermon. I will put some gravy on the sermon. I will put some gravy on the sermon. If I don't do it long, I'm put some gravy on the sermon. Say gravy. I'm gonna put some gravy on it. That's what Mother High Smith always say. You want some you want some gravy with your food. Put some get some gravy to put on. <laughs> Yeah, 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 gravy with the biscuit, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll give you some gravy next week, I, I promise. I'll give you a little gravy. So don't, 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 don't think. I, 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 somebody said, do what the Lord say do. And that's what, that's what he's saying right now. Give them a little gravy next week. That, that's what the Lord is saying right now. Give them a little gravy next week. So, so, they, can, so they can digest this. Come on, come on, say amen. All right, so we, we promise we'll try to give you a, no, we're not going to try. We're going to give you some gravy next week. We'll give you some gravy. All right, if you're here, don't have a church home. Good time to come. Good time to come. Why should you come? Because he wants you. He wants you. He wants you. I'm so glad that the Lord wants me. Come on, say, he wants me. Come on. He wants me. Come on, say, he wants me. Make it personal. He wants me. I'm so glad that the Lord wants me. Will there be one? Will there be one? Come now. Come now. You come now. Will there be one? Come now. I'm so glad that the Lord wants me. You may be seated. All right. Those. Everybody have your church covenant. Let's let's read the church covenant together and before we go into our communion, let's read the church covenant. Come on, let's let's read together. Having been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another 
as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort, to promote its prosperity and spirituality, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline, and doctrine, to contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to religiously educate our children, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealing, faithful in our engagement, and exemplary in our deportment, to avoid all talent, backbiting, and excessive anger, to abstain from the sale and use of intoxicating drink as a beverage, and to be zealous in our efforts to advance the kingdom of our Savior. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly love, to remember each other in prayer, to aid each other in sickness and distress, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without debate. We will over-engage that we remove from this place, we will as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Now to him who was brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, be power and glory forever. Let the church say amen. to you this morning, Father, thanking you for the message that the pastor preached this morning. I've been praying, Father, that the pastor preached this message, Father, because we got to realize that how serious this communion is. Because we know, Father, if we pray before we take this communion and believe in our heart that you are able to do all that the pastor says. It is possible. Thank you, Father, for everything you've done so far. Continue to fill our pastor with messages that we need to know, Father. Bless the sick and the shut-in. Continue to bless us. I'm asking you to change this bread and this wine to some spiritual, Father. These are all blessings I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 